Hi, this is Nat and today I'm going to talk about independent game creators. I have three videos planned, covering different aspects, some positive, some negative, but each of them will stand alone. This one is around one of the easily overlooked issues with indies. Specifically, I am going to be talking about how we possibly go too easy on the indie scene, and how this bad habit may be to blame for the many shortcomings of the games they release, and is possibly holding them back. The problems arise when the game is shipped, and when it comes to critiquing and analysing the game. Too many indie titles are given a soft ride, on the basis of coming from a small developer. This is where we have to toughen up. We need to judge the game on the game's merits, and not imbue it with the mystical properties of being the product of a one-person team. Everyone loves the romantic ideal of the small-time passionate games creator, who just couldn't subscribe to the big corporation's ethos and struck out on their own to make the games they wanted to make. And that's great! I wholeheartedly support that. But we need to be real for a moment. These games developers are making something, very often with an eye on making a profit from it. They are as much a business as Ubisoft Montreal, Bioware, Gearbox and Blizzard. And even when they are not actively seeking to profit directly off the created game, they are still the creators of something. Evaluation is part of the artistic process. We should not spoon out sugar-coated criticism just because it is easier to relate to an individual name than the members of a seemingly faceless corporation. People, real-life human beings, with legs and arms and hopes and dreams, make games at EA and Ubisoft too. Many of them work long hours, and I'm sure many are deeply, personally invested in the games they have worked on. But we would not hold back for one minute our criticism of the products these companies create, and we shouldn't. It's just easier to do it to a faceless company logo than a person. This is rather problematic and dangerous. We may risk enabling bad or misguided game designers through our over-appreciation of the worth of their creations. Sometimes you have to tell children off, regardless of their wide-eyed stare. The danger is that if we do not, then they will not learn of, nor indeed from the mistakes they have made. Or we could create entitled monsters who are not prepared when true criticism inevitably arrives. Is this perhaps one of the reasons we have seen some truly creative and passionate indie developers go into startling meltdowns when they finally encounter resistance to new thoughts, ideas or games? Is it one of the reasons some independent developers seem to make and remake the same game? The same creativity we are excited to see may be inhibited by our unwillingness to assess it. Also, this fixation with the cult of the individual devalues the collaborative effort of a large team. Outside of the Kojimas, the Miyamotos, the Levines and the Blazinskis, most people who game, even seriously, will only recognise at best a studio's name and not the creatives behind their favourite titles. When a studio creates a well-polished, exciting and innovative title, we may too quickly and with an air of sheer entitlement treat this as a fulfilment of a cynical expectation and not celebrate it as an achievement in its own right. Consumers too may be simply left out in the cold, as journalists fawn over the particular flavour of the month. They may label shallow and yet pretty games as must-buy, and describe deep but unwelcoming games as rewarding. Instead of reporting on the flaws and bugs they would ruminate on during the analysis of a AAA developed title, we may receive a fluffy piece empathising with the biographical details of the game's creator. We end up being misinformed about these games, which are indicators of a developer's promise, not the realisation of it. As soon as a price goes on to a game, it must be judged as coolly and calmly as any other game. This is something that matters. Too often we allow independent developers to revel in the security of their artistry, free from critique as the sole creator. Yet games are a new and rapidly evolving form, and there is much to learn from the mediums which existed before. Artists, novelists and many a singer-songwriter have learned that inexperience and the romantic ideal are not shields from worthwhile criticisms. The best in these fields have often drifted in and out of the world of criticism themselves, creating an atmosphere of accepted failures on the understanding that something will have been acquired from the experience, and that the next work will be better. I would like to imagine that games could evolve in much this manner too. Certainly, we ought to celebrate the achievements of independent game creators, and perhaps even more than we do, the well-financed larger developers with entire departments devoted to advertising and maintaining brand profile and awareness. I just think that this should be tempered and kept in perspective and out of reviews. This I think is more suited to opinion pieces and editorials than being given space in a review. We are Dennis Lippers USB. If you like this video, then take the time to apply a strict analysis and relay this through a click of the like button. If you want to carry on the discussion about independent game developers, then make a considered judgement and type it into the comments section below. And if you really really took to my assembled ramblings, then click subscribe and check out my other videos.